Welcome to Superhuman Center. Uh, this one is constructing, this one is uh, finished. Here is our prosthetic lab, rehabilitation department and psychological support. And now we are adding up social workers. So uh, we are not only rehabilitating people so they can walk, we are trying to find the reason for them to walk. So uh, we're trying to socialize them because they can't go back to the front lines. Some of them go, some of them cannot. So we need to help them to find a job or education or everything. So the, the service becoming longer you know, after rehabilitation with the social work. So let's go inside, I'll show you very quickly around. And how did you, how did you get into this? Because this is an incredible facility you're building here. I assume this didn't exist a year ago. Um, how did you get into it? What, what, what's the sort of passion and experience that, that drove you into doing uh, this? That's Andre's idea. Andre's over there on the back. He wanted to build, uh, he wanted to solve a problem. Uh, the problem is we want to see a different picture of Ukraine after the war. Mm -hmm. Without people, we don't want to see people with disabilities. We want to see people fixed people with school prothesis, with fixed faces, with scars, not wounds. So that's an instrument to do that. And uh, we built it, you know, from the idea to the opening less than a year. That's so extraordinary. Yeah, everyone was telling us that we are crazy to build something during the war. And uh, our next location is Kharkiv. And people tell us we are crazy again. And we've been crazy a year ago and now it's working. So Let's have a look inside. Yeah. Uh, this is a reception zone. This is where all uh, all our patients spend time while they are waiting. They play games here. Uh, they meet uh, for the first time their doctors. So that's here is the main entrance, which is closed right now because of the reconstruction process and the rehabilitation floor on the second floor. Uh, so they uh, do the cast. It's a very simple mm. explanation of what the prosthetists do here. They, they get creative when I explain in very simple terms. They do the cast and then they produce the exact copy of your um, stump. Mm -hmm. And that's the first step. It's almost an art work here. And then they move to the second room. That's where they produce stump holders. This is a temporary stump holder. When you need, it needs to be transparent so the prostitutes actually see, you know, where you need to fix it, where you need to put additional uh, cover. And this is a constant one. So we decorate it the way that our patients want. We put the pictures they want here. So they need to love their, you know, new part mm. of the body. So this is uh, actually the oven. Uh, you use plastic, you put plastic on top of the, of the copy of your stump and you end up having the temporary uh, uh, stump holder and then you use carbon or other materials to make a constant one so this is a step two and the step three is working with metal wood and plastic actually you know adjusting that to the patient uh, the the most positive part on the left hand side is a patient so on the right hand side is a prosthetic lab so the patient from the moment he walked in to the moment he is on his two uh, you know, fits, it's almost like two, three days. It's, and if something's not working out, you know, we can adjust it right here. So they don't need to wait until we take it to the lab, bring it back and everything. Is that for life or do they have to be renewed uh, every couple of years? It has to be fixed people, lose weight people, gain weight. Uh, so it needs to be adjusted so quite, you know, quite often. And uh, you know, two three years, depending on a prosthesis, on your needs and goals. Sometimes you need you know uh, a sport one, or your goals and needs has changed, so it's uh, different. Yeah, it's uh, hydrotherapy. It's uh, where we work with the patients. Uh, so it's uh, more about rehabilitation. It's not recreation. It's rehabilitation. Uh, because the water takes off up to 90% of your weight so you can walk here if you can't walk there and also the water resistance helps to rehabilitate patients faster uh, so this is rehabilitation floor it's going to be connected with main building uh, here is psychologist here is the uh, doctors and everything and here is a uh, 
is getting back on the front lines. So we Rob rehabilitated him to you know to put on a tourniquet, mm -hmm. to shoot because he has two uh, prosthesis. Bionic on the right hand and uh, on the left hand is... Um and uh, do many go back to the front? I mean, what sort of percentage? Some obviously can't because of their trauma almost, is too, too great. Uh, yeah. Almost, almost, I would say 80% wants to come back mm. to the front line, but not everyone can, of course. Yeah. So that's why we need to find the, the role for them in a, in a, in a normal life. But... Um, Nicola can go as a combat trainer, as um, advisor, as he can work with documents and uh, a lot of guys from the mining industry are going back because they can teach others. Yeah. Uh, so they can't do the work at the front line because of the bionic prosthesis, because of, you know, you need to charge it, it's very sensitive to water, you know, mm -hmm. test everything, but they can do a lot of work because Logistics they Logistics roles, support, training yeah. roles. Yeah, yeah. But we, we want them to, to, to live a normal life, uh, to, to live a civil life. So that's, that's our biggest, mm -hmm. biggest dream. Now, so that's a rehabilitation floor. And the third floor is um, uh, teaching classes and relax zone for our guys. So when they get sick and tired of us, they go on the third floor. They have computer games there. They have a uh, place where they can relax, eat, and uh, spend time. So that's uh, the three floors that are working right now. And uh, like I said, we are reconstructing the main floors. <laughs> and yeah. uh, of course, they feel mobile here. They feel that they have a lot of freedom here. But when they go back into the cities, there isn't mm -hmm. the same facilities, are there? Getting into shops, metros, um, there can be some when challenges. When they are verticalized and walk, that's more or less fine. Um, you know, there are some difficulties, but people who are verticalized more or less okay to move around. But people in wheelchairs, definitely for them, it's not very accessible mm. city. So that's why we need to rebuild the cities. We need to rebuild infrastructure to make it more comfortable. That's fantastic. An incredible job you're doing here. Um, incredible, incredible people, actually. You know, they, they really want to go back to life. And uh, the goal of our medical director is that people who live superhumans have to live with better uh, score than they had before the, the trauma. So we work to rehabilitate them to their dreams, not even to their goals. So the dreams are more powerful. So we try to understand what they want to do in life, what is their biggest wish, and we bring them with the team to that point. But we can't do that without them because they have to, they are our partners in this process. So most of our patients are very motivated, you know, very tuned to go back on there too. So it's, uh, we are surrounded by amazing people here. And a crucial question is people watching this, how can they help? How can they help with donations, those who maybe want to volunteer, those who perhaps want to reach out to Western companies for support, financial support? What, what can they do? Well, definitely the easiest way is Yakono. Vashko? Normal. Okay. Uh, so basically, if you have, you met from. <laughs> Um, you saw Rob on the first floor. We're Rob was here. volunteering for two months here. Uh, he is occupational therapist and his skills were very, very important. So if you have a specific, like if you're a prosthetist, uh, you're, you, know, you know how to do reconstructive surgery or you're a rehabilitologist like uh, occupational therapy or hydrotherapy, welcome to come here and volunteer. Uh, that's number one. Number two, we always need money because 50 patients for us is $1 million. We can make 50 patients per month. We need to raise $1 million only in prosthetic components. The average cost is 20,000. Most of our patients have double, triple amputations. So meaning one patient can cost up to $150,000 and it's very important to return them back to life. So money is always a great idea. Uh, the more money we have, the more people we can fix. And I don't think that many people in the West realize the scale of trauma that you're dealing with. I mean, not since the First World War have there been so many amputees on this kind of scale. And obviously this facility is incredible, 
but you can't treat everybody who's coming back from the front. We can't treat everybody, but we are scaling up to five more regions and we are training rehabilitologists, we are training prostitutes for the rest of Ukraine. So we are trying to actually, you know, build the capacity of Ukrainian healthcare system. So we are not the only one, definitely. Uh, the line is very long, that's very true, especially for the upper limbs. We are lacking specialists for the upper limbs, that's uh, the biggest problem. Um, yeah, I mean, everyone who's in the front lines right now will need rehabilitation in, in different forms. Uh, psychological, physical, people had bad nutrition for almost a year and a half. They slept on the ground and uh, they carried 30 kilograms. So all of them will need rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. So the need for rehabilitation in this country is going to be huge for the next years. 40% of Ukrainian territory is mined, meaning that if the war stops tomorrow, we'll still have civilians and uh, uh, demining personnel who will be coming to superhumans because they lost their limbs. That's the reality. And you're also training up experts, because I assume when the war began, obviously you've been at, at war since 2014, but the scale of expertise you require, you're obviously playing a key role in, in creating that generation of experts who can help deal with the trauma. We are building an educational center here. Right now we only train for separate skills, like in rehabilitation we do short trainings, but we need actually to bring a new army or of psychologists, prosthetists and rehabilitologists. So it's a lot of work. This is an incredible job you're doing, uh, Olya, and I'm extremely I, I love grateful. What we do. I love what we do, you know. It's, uh, Probably the first place in all my life when you see results so quickly. Mm -hmm. You see someone who walked in, in a wheelchair and in three days this person is walking towards you. This is the best job I ever had. You know, it's incredibly yeah, rewarding. Yeah. yeah, it's returning lost abilities mm -hmm. to the best people. And I can see country. when we arrived, you know everybody by name, you know the patients, you know their circumstances, you know their stage of development. And I can see the, the passion you've got for it really comes out strongly. They all deserve, uh, you know, really the, the best attitude. And I want to know their stories because I need to build the best service for them. So I know everything about them from the way how they go to the toilet, if they are double amputees, to, you know, to the way when they have kids, families and uh, other problems. We need to know that because this way we can adjust the service and deliver them what they want, not what we think they want. So that's a very, you know, very friendly project. Um, last question, we're running an event tomorrow. One of the key focuses is on victory, what victory means and how it's achieved. For you, what is victory and what does victory mean uh, in, the, in the war? It's, uh, the answer is very clear. You know, we, I want our territories back, you know, as it was. So that, there is no doubt. So I want Crimea back. I was raised in Crimea. Uh, I was born in Donetsk. Uh, that's two of my homelands. I want my territories back. And I want to have a right to make a decision how to live in this country. That's, that's, that's a victory for me. You know, give us back our territories. Give us rights to, to run our life the, w the way we want. And uh, lots of challenges ahead of us. But after everything we have been through, we are ready. I don't know. We are I don't ready. think everyone watching this channel believes in that victory. I'm so grateful to you spending time talking to us. I know you've got an incredibly packed schedule and you've got this incredible institution to run. So we're hugely grateful that you could spend some time Thank to Thank you very talk. much for keeping Ukraine in, um, in headlines and in your hearts. We are a very brave nation. We can do that, but we can't do that without your support. We have just too big uh, enemy to fight. But we definitely prove the world that we can do that. We just need support. Absolutely. Slava Ukraine. Giro and Slava. Well, thank you much, so much for talking. Um, you're obviously sort of in incredibly young here, but your role in the center, I understand, is extremely important as a sort of first contact. So what's your experience of the center and, and what's your role here now? Я ще поки не працюю, але я на етапі влаштування працівником. 
Я намагаюся, щоб наші люди, які отримали поранення, зрозуміли, що можна жити і без якоїсь частини тіла за межами Superhumans. Ми це прикладаємо. Ви вже слайд, так? Так, так. Тобто, я маю, ви вже пройшли реабілітацію процесу, щоб отримати вашу простратику в цьому центрі. What was the experience like and, and the staff that you worked with? Because um, the impression we got here is that there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot more sort of joy and resilience uh, that we found in going on the tour here. And what's been your experience? В мене не було іншої реабілітації, просто проблема стояла в тому, що я не могла покидати своє рідне місце, де я лежала в санаторію, тому я приїжджала сюди на дуже маленький період, але із-за цього я дуже швидко навчилася ходити, і я вже через місяць почала ходити повністю без опори, і тому я іноді допомагаю людям вперше робити якісь кроки та пояснити, як саме треба працювати з протезом. So this is a quick, complete coincidence. We, we didn't know you were going to be here. Okay. This isn't set up. But I understand that you have some involvement with creating this incredible facility and the work that it's doing. Uh, you, 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 you know, we uh, started to be involved or we get first information about this project in, in February. After that, we started to, t to take a look how we can help. And you know, Softster is a key company. We are working with high tech. And our idea was somehow to be involved in a project that, that very close to our people. You, you know, our, our business is based on people. We invest a lot, a lot in education. We have a, a software university. And we decided uh, to invest into um, teaching local doctors some sort of co complex surgeries. And the, uh, we invest in about $1 million. It's a it's, it's, uh, joint project with, with U.S. Uh, medical center, currently I don't remember the name, and it will be three visits from the United States here to train uh, our people. As a result, uh, we will have um, completed about 30 plus uh, surgeries, uh, like patients, uh, about 20 doctors, and all equipment that will be used during this training will be kept here for, for further. So we, we are looking for some sort of project that is not one-time investment. This is some sort of investment. We have like ma many repeat events. And we are happy to be involved and participate in this. This is incredible and necessary work, unfortunately. Yes, yeah. yes. You, you know, currently it's very difficult time for Ukrainian people and we all should be together and to do... Each of us has like so own uh, front uh, how we can be involved we work in a lot in business to like to earn money and to to help people uh, who are fighting uh, in in army who are getting some sort of uh, ret uh, ret retreatment so so many directions this is incredible thank you so much thank you. Yeah. Thank So I believe you had a very close involvement with the planning and construction of this amazing facility. Так, я займаю як керівник будівельного проекту Superhumans. В моїх задачах було організувати команду, яка б повністю створила такий доступний простір Superhumans. Це і будівельники, і проектанти, і консультанти з інклюзивності. And I understand that this building is renovated, so you didn't build a building from scratch, but it was a Soviet construction. So I imagine you had a lot of problems in creating a world-class facility in this sort of shell of an old building. Так, це була дуже стара будівля 76-го року будівництва. Це радянська будівля, яка була повністю недоступна. Ми добудували додатково ліфт, ми добудували підйомники на вході. Ми всі простори, всі двері розширили для того, щоб бути максимально доступними. Ми можемо пишатися тим, що наша будівля на сьогодні одна з найбільш доступних в Україні. Людина з точки А самостійно може потрапити в точку Б без допомоги будь-якої людини. І ми хочемо, щоб всі будівлі в Україні and now you're planning other facilities uh, throughout Ukraine because the scale of people who require treatment is, is actually mind-boggling. Um, 
what are the challenges in, in taking the learnings you've got from this center and applying them? Does it get easier or do you have a new set of problems, let's say in Kharkiv and other locations? Так, ми хочемо ще плюс 5 центів додатково в Україні, але кожен регіон, він відрізняється. Тобто Львів, він більше до кордону, він такий місце більш історичне. Коли ми приїжджаємо до Харкова, ми розуміємо, що будівля має бути занурена під землю, бо Харків це така найбільш обстрілювана зона бойових дій, і ми маємо щось зробити під землею. Якщо ми переходимо в Миколаїв, ми маємо використовувати доступ до моря і будемо робити реабілітацію саме за допомогою моря. Якщо це Дніпро, це більше така на сьогодні військова частина, ну, військовий регіон, і ми будемо робити щось додаткове до е, саме військових. Отже, кожен регіон буде окремий, і ми маємо враховувати всі ці е, показники. And this is amazing work. I want to say thank you for you and your colleagues showing us around. This is clearly a world-class facility. The last question, we came here expecting to see a lot of trauma. We, expect, we expected, I think, to come and see people with sad faces and, and you know, a little bit of trepidation. What we actually see is an incredible amount of joy and life and people really you know, confronting their trauma and trying to move on. How do you create this incredible atmosphere? Не знаю, бо ми це все робимо від душі. Да? Людина, коли перше потрапляє до нас, він, пацієнт трошечки замкнений. Коли він потрапляє в повністю доступний простір, він бачить таких самих людей, як і він, з такими самими травмами. І коли до нього персонал з щирою душею, то він занурюється в цю атмосферу і він стає таким самим щирим, відкритим. І е, це, це заслуга нашої великої команди. І ми всіх пацієнтів любимо, ми знаємо кожного, е, як звуть кожного життя, да, вони наші друзі, вони не просто пацієнти. Це наша велика родина з Хорхюманс. Thank you so much for the work you do. Thank you for speaking to us. Slava Ukraine. Uh, героям слава, дякую. <laughs> This is just an incredible place. I'm absolutely blown away by what we've seen. This is a world-class facility on the outskirts of Lviv. I don't think any of us coming here today were expecting this. We were gearing ourselves up for something traumatic to see people, uh, heart-wrenching situations, maybe even people who are traumatized and depressed. And we don't want to you know, gloss over that. Of course, they've gone through incredible suffering. But what we saw here is incredible work being done in world-class facilities by you know, expert surgeons who are absolutely passionate about what they're doing and actually we saw a huge amount of resilience and even an incredible sense of life. Uh, it completely went against our expectations and we're absolutely stunned to see this. This place built in a year under wartime conditions to absolutely world-class standards and they're now doubling the facility. They're looking to build five of these centers across Ukraine. This is incredible and this is why this is why Ukraine must win. This kind of resilience, this humanity, this care that we see here for every individual soldier um, and the efforts to try and rehabilitate them and give them a mobile, meaningful life. We know that on the other side, Russians are left to die in ditches and beaten by dogs. There's no care for their troops. They don't give a damn about human life. This is why Ukraine must triumph.